Hi everyone, welcome to Reading with Reference. My name is Catherine, I'm a reference librarian at the Haverford Township Free Library, and today I've got two books to tell you about that I've read recently and really loved. Um, one is a recent release, it came out about a week and a half ago, and the other is a little bit of a sneak peek, it doesn't come out until later this year. So the first one is uh, Florence Adler Swims Forever, it came out July 7th, and it was written by Rachel Beanland. It's set in Atlantic City in the summer of 1934, and it follows the Adler family. Parents Esther and Joseph, their two adult daughters, Fanny and Florence, their granddaughter Gussie, son-in-law Isaac, and their mysterious German house guest Anna. Almost all of them are living in the Adler's small apartment while they rent their house out to tourists for the summer. But really, as the title suggests, the crux of everything that happens in this novel is 20-year-old Florence. She's an avid swimmer who's home from Wellesley for the summer, and she plans to spend that time training to swim the English Channel. But within the novel's first few pages, there's a terrible accident during one of Florence's routine swims in the Atlantic that ends in her death. Of course, all of the Adlers are shocked and devastated, but Esther follows that up by making a truly shocking decision. Her older daughter, Fanny, is nearing the end of a risky pregnancy after having lost a baby the previous summer, so she's in the hospital on bed rest and she doesn't know that her sister has died, and Esther decides that it's best if they keep it that way and hide the news from her for the next two months or until the baby is born. She enlists everyone's help down to Fanny's seven-year-old daughter, Gussie, to keep that secret. Over the course of the summer in the cramped apartment, the tensions between the characters mount and other resentments and secrets are brought to the forefront as a result. I love a good family drama novel and this one is packed full of that, but it's also a really beautiful story about grief and connection and love. Rachel Bainland is also just an excellent storyteller and she makes the stakes feel so high for all of her characters in such be believable and heartbreaking ways. But the other thing that I really loved about this book was the backdrop of history that's happening behind the main events. It's set just five years before World War II begins and you can feel the tension of it building. The Adlers are Jewish and Beanland has also done a really excellent job of weaving in the fear and discrimination they encounter almost daily, as well as what's happening in Germany, Germany where Anna, their house guest, has just left and where her parents remain. These are the things that I feel like I sometimes miss in historical fiction. Um, there's too much time spent, understandably, on war and its aftermath. And I find myself wanting to know more about what happened before, how it got to that point. If you like historical fiction or just really great writing, honestly, I think you'll love Florence Adler Swims Forever. It's available on Libby now and by request via our catalog. Um, the second book that I want to tell you about, like I said, is not out until later this year. It comes out October 6th. It is Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. Um, like I said, it's not ready yet, but it is definitely worth getting on your holds list early. It's so great. Um, I almost feel like it's two different books, uh, the one that it starts off as and the one that it morphs into by about a third of the way in. Normally, I don't think that's such a good thing in a book. Um, it can feel a little Frankensteinish or stitched together, but it works so well here. The first part of the book is about Amanda and Clay and their teenage children, Archie and Rose, who are on their way to an Airbnb vacation in a super remote area of the Hamptons. They're just settling in when all of a sudden, one night, an older black couple shows up claiming to be the owners of the house the family, who are white, is renting. No one's quite clear on who's telling the truth or what anyone wants out of this situation. And that's the book that I thought I was picking up when I started reading this, and Alam does a great job of exploring the tensions of that situation. But it quickly becomes clear to the reader and to the characters that something else is going on. There's no cell signal at the house, so none of them can get any confirmation, but strange things are happening. And those things are strange enough that they seem to be pointing to something truly terrible or even apocalyptic. I won't give any more plot details away, details away because part of what makes this book so great is the way that they're revealed and the way that the tension builds as Alam does so. But what I do want to tell you is how incredibly well he nails that feeling that I think we're all experiencing right now, that world ending, or at least this world is different than anything we've ever experienced before feeling. Obviously, Ruman Alam wrote this book before the pandemic even began, and he really could have had no way of knowing that we would be living in a world that feels eerily similar to the one he's created here. And I think that's part of what's so great about it. What he's written is so believable and grounded that it makes the spooky parts even spookier. I don't watch a lot of horror movies, but this feels like watching a really great one with tons of suspense and dread building the whole time. Um, it's really great. I finished it this morning and I can't stop thinking about it. So that is Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Um, I hope you're reading something great over the weekend as well. Thanks again. Take care.